We're here in the Finger Lakes region of New York State, which is pretty much my home, home away from home. I love, you know, these Finger Lakes because with a west predominant wind, you know, the best part about a west wind on the Finger Lakes, you can at least fish the west side. So, you know, we, we target a lot of these lakes, especially early season. You know, we fish a lot on Cuca Lake. We fish a lot on Cayuga Lake. We're on Seneca Lake today. But yeah, all I'm doing today is just trying to find some of these pre-spawn perch that are out looking for a place to, to lay up. And it seems like they're on that break. They're just kind of coming up, search around. Then we got some weed growth finally, some colored water. The ingredients are here, the wind's blowing, it's good. Right now we're just kind of running some side scan and some 2D sonar on some structure. We've got a break here that's probably starts in the 50s and 60s, comes up into the 30s and 40s, and then even up in the 20s. And on that tight corner, there's some good current here and there's some warmer water dumping out of some of these creeks and it's allowing us to find a few fish here and there. But haven't been here in a couple, couple weeks, so we're just gonna just glass it real quick, check it out. He ate that swim bait. Oh, yeah. Couldn't resist that little guy, you know? He wanted that little sculpey. So that's drop shot on that 7-2. And like I said, I mean, I've got enough power to set hooks. I felt that bite, even though it was 40, 50 feet of water. And I think that's what the advantage is going to be, is just reaching out and be able to touch these fish. Soak that one up. Look at that bait. That's pretty cool. Gonna have to get to the pliers for that one. There she is. A little sculpey. Had to do a little talking into make talk him into doing it. But definitely made it happen. Beautiful fish. But yeah, I'm using this new DXS 6103XF. I like the 610 with the extra fast tip. Especially with these, you know, little quarters and little halves. I mean, they're just, they're great. I can feel every bit of everything that's on the bottom. You know, pair that up with a good braid and a, and a, and a leader. Um, it's got just enough backbone in it to set hooks when you're 30, 40, 50 feet down. And it's really making a big difference in how we present our jigs too, because I'm feeling everything. I can feel it when it comes over a rock. I can feel it when it goes through a weed. I can feel it when it hits a zebra mussel. I can tell a bite. And uh, it's definitely increased our odds because we're catching, you know, maybe we're catching five or six more fish a trip, but those are the five or six bites that you need to find maybe one or two of your kicker fish for a tournament, you know? So, there he goes. He read that. That was just a tight, 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 tight little tick, actually. Just. Just picked it up off the bottom. Just a little guy. He cooperated though. Coming up. There we go. There we go. That's what they look like. I love the color in them. They're just, you know, they're beautiful this time of year. They've got those big yellow bellies and you know, a lot of times that orange, that orange fin is just gorgeous. What they're doing is they're they're basically stopping it, so they're not necessarily going and and striking with a, with a vengeance. They're actually pinning it to the bottom. So, you know, a lot of times it'll just be a stop. So as you're retrieving on a real slow retrieval, um, it'll it won't be a real aggressive you know a bite. It's more like a like a pause. And when you feel that pause, is when they're just pinning it to the bottom to to engage with it. And when that happens, um, you, know, you better you better bring the English, just because uh, they they are not on it for long. Once they kind of figure out it's not exactly what they've been eating for the last three months, you know, it's like you better talk them into to, to eating some plastic. So a lot of times, you know, it's just that pause. And so what I'm doing is, like I said, keeping in contact with the jig at all times, making sure that I'm feeling it and not giving it too much slack. Now, I'm not swimming it super fast. The current's pushing in here, the wind's pushing in here. So it's naturally bringing my jig you know, to them. So I don't have to swim it by them per se, but I want to at least put it in front of them, make them think twice about you know, what it is we're trying to present here. But there he is. Yeah. That's down.
Yeah, you're gonna be a digger. You're gonna be a digger. So yeah, I mean, that one, you can see, he was pretty aggressive. I made a little different cast there. I just pitched out a little further. I think they're up. We just landed a little deeper, but this will be a good one. Come up in the depths. Beauty, beautiful fish. You can see how it took that jig and just made it its own. That one's actually gonna be uh, just getting ready to spawn. They're getting really, really close. Beautiful. But yeah, I'm using just a six pound, six pound braid, doesn't really matter the manufacturer, as long as it's smooth. Um, I'm using about a eight pound fluorocarbon leader just connecting the two and give myself a good 16 or 18, inch, 18 inches. I like to have a little bit of stretch there. It's almost like, acts like a shock absorber. And I think what happens, especially when we're pitching jigs, you know, and zebra mussels and, and everything else, I just, I up it just a little bit. Um, got away with five pound fluorocarbon for a long time. And just with the zebra mussels and then the size of the fish, if you're catching bass in with some of these fish, or if you're catching, you know, some of those predator pickerel and, you know, can get really tough to keep that bait attached. Just going back to the whole Douglas rods, I mean, this, again, I'm using anywhere from a 610 to a 7 to a 7.2, and I've got different applications. I mean, right now I'm just pitching a little 610, but, you know, I'm going to pull out my 7-footer. My seven I can cast, you know, a mile with it if I need to. I've got, you know, the sensitivity of that extra fast tip and, and you know, some backbone in the down here in the handle that when I need to set a hook on a, you know, pound and a half, two pound, 16 inch fish, I'm gonna make sure that I get them to the boat every time. And there's not a lot of manufacturers that make that, that same 7.2 in the flex that, that Douglas makes it. And I just love it for, you know, certain situations. I've actually drop shot a lot with it. And uh, I've got a really great reach with a, with a stick bait. You know, I've been pitching stick baits for years in the weeds, catching big walleyes doing that. And, and you know, if you're gonna cast for eight hours in a tournament, you don't want to cast a telephone pole. And just so that lightweight responsiveness just allows you to cast all day. That's why we wanted to pick up this line and, and really try to give it give it a go this year just because of the fact that these are some of the lightest, most sensitive, you know, most accurate casting rods in the industry. And, you know, we try to use everything as, you know, up to speed is the best. If we can have the best of everything, you know, or at least at that point before we get to the lake and, and then it's time to be the best on the water. And that's that's where we have to come in as anglers is just understanding that, you know, we have to put a game plan together. We have to make changes on the fly. The water conditions change, the fish change, conditions change, the wind changes, things that we can't control. We, we have to adjust to things we can control, like putting rods in our hands or, you know, those are decisions we can make as anglers. So, you know, today I think, you know, the fish are just in a mood. I mean, it's, it's late. I mean, we're talking May 10th. I mean, it's, it's past season, if you will, everybody's, talking about going and doing other things and we're still out here just you know just kind of seeing what they're doing like where they are what they've done how they've changed and i think today's just a real you know true tale of locating fish with electronics you know using your graph using your you know your instincts of where they were probably set up based on wind and that's exactly what they're doing i mean the fish that we just caught here for the last 30 minutes or so like that one they're just uh you know they're up feeding on some on some structure and you're gonna to want to see this one. Um, you know, it's and it's it's you know it's textbook. If you can find them on electronics, put the baits in the water that they are feeding on. You know, we're doing that. We're matching the hatch. You know, you're gonna have a successful day. And you know, I just noticed those fish were up off the bottom, and I knew you got some great shots and what that looks like. So, this is the result. Of finding them on your electronics and finding what they want to eat. There it is. Once again, soaking it up. That one took it pretty good.